I don't want to die, so no thank you. And I could feel the presence of that being becoming upset, and Ron asked if I was okay. Hey everybody, I'm Rory Scoble. And I'm Ron Funches, and this is a story of the mushroom hike that changed both our lives. At the time, I wasn't very well versed in taking mushrooms nor doing hikes at all. I believe I came dressed for this hike wear full dress shoes and slacks because I only owned two outfits at this time. We hiked into the Mirror Woods up in San Francisco. My girlfriend at the time, uh, who's now my wife, and uh, our friends. And my wife looks at me and she says, uh, You're eating quite a bit of mushrooms. And I arrogantly look at her and I was just like, <laughs> buy the ticket, take the ride. And there's no chance anyone in the group thought that was cool uh, at no, all. No, we did not. We did not think it was cool. We thought it was a weird thing to say to your significant other. We start hiking up the trail even further and my mushrooms start kicking in within five minutes. And I'm like, hey, I think I need to hang back. And the rest of the group, is like, oh great, we're we're heading up the trail and Ron was willing to stay back, not for my safety. We sit down, I close my eyes and immediately every cell in my body just accelerated out into the universe, out into the beyond. I could, it, it was the most real feeling. When I got out there, I remember this very real presence of this being telling me that, that now I was gonna get to know all of the secrets. The only time you get to know all the secrets is when you're about to die and I don't want to die. So no thank you. I don't want to know the secrets. Hey, I could feel the presence of that being becoming upset. Hey, I opened my eyes and Ron asked if I was okay. For me at that time, I was again just on a moderate amount of mushroom. So I was laying down, happy to get off my feet. And I just closed my eyes and was seeing little fun traces and having a solid time. But then I opened my eyes and I look over at him and he is very pale, like a, a Casper or a powder, if you're familiar with that movie. <laughs> Not only did you think you were dead, you thought that you might have actively been in hell. And I, I didn't believe that to be true at the time. And, and if it was true, then that was very bad news for me as well. Because I, <laughs> at one point, I asked Ron Funches to punch me, knock me out. Then I could skip all this anguish and just wake up sober. Well, I knew it was a bad idea for me to punch a random white man in the face and then call the authorities on myself. While Ron is kind of dealing with, you know, his own internal struggles i'm dealing with mine which is is the concept of death and and how it's been a part of my my life and my psyche for so long losing a parent at such a young age it's kind of something that's just been sitting on me my whole life and for whatever reason this this is the trip that the mushrooms decided you know we got to unclog these pipes that are dealing with it so ron and i start to walk down the trail back to the parking lot which is the smartest decision that we made the entire day and while we walked passing many many japanese uh tourists hearing the japanese language which is a beautiful language on mushrooms there were moments i thought they were talking about me loudly probably two times i asked ron if they were fucking with me i had to confirm to you that that japanese is indeed a real language that people speak and it was not a prank made to <laughs> mess with you uh many many years ago <laughs> And it helped me come up with one of my favorite jokes of all time, which was, I did a joke about how people ask me what it's like to raise a child that has autism. And I said, it's a lot like uh, hanging out with a friend that has done way too many shrooms when you yourself are on a moderate amount of shrooms. So Ron and I get to the end of the trail and now we're back in the, the parking lot. We go into the bathroom. For some reason I thought, you know, if I just take a shit and that'll fix everything. And so on Mushroom, starting to look at the, the hatred and the over-sexualized phrases that are just all over, I start having another panic. Yeah, I called my friend Ganja John, which is a good name to call when you're having a difficult drug experience. So while, while Ron's on the phone, swear to God, just 12 wild turkeys just walked past me. And I like looked up at, <laughs> looked up at Ron like, are these real? Are these turkeys actually here? And at this time, I'm just over it. So I'm still on the phone just going, yeah, man, these, these turkeys are clearly real. You see them, I see them.
get, get over it. We've all seen turkeys. It was shortly after that we see our friends. They come yeah. skipping down that hill, just skipping yes. and, and loving you, just high fiving. Yeah, talking about all the experiences they went through. That they found a beautiful meadow with rainbows and, and, and owls. deer that just ate out of their hands. It was a good lesson about pushing forward and and, and pushing through. But also sometimes you just gotta turn back and hang out with some turkeys in a parking lot. <laughs> The one thing I did like that I learned about him is how much he cared for his girlfriend at that time. Not long after that, I proposed to my wife. Ron's guidance and support through all that kind of led me to this conclusion of the level of commitment I was ready to make. And truly, the amount of love and concern you had for Jordan at that time really kind of showed me that I didn't necessarily feel the same for my wife. And then I got divorced. Yeah, and you realized you could, on your own, take care of a, a child uh who was approaching 30 <laughs> <laughs> tales from the